Hello, everyone, and welcome to Today I Learned, a BU Today podcast where we explore fun facts and ideas across a variety of academic disciplines. We interview students about exciting things they learn in their favorite classes at BU. From changing majors to picking career paths, students often find that single classes have a really transformative impact on their future. I'm your host, Sophie Yaron, and I'm investigating how the things we learn in the classroom affect our lives. And to do that, we will be speaking directly to BU students, which is why we have Diego Garrido Barredo joining us in the studio today. Diego, thank you so much for being here. Sophie, thank you. I am blessed and happy to be here with you. All We're you. so happy to hear that. So, Diego, this is your first semester as a Master of Divinity student uh, at the School of Theology. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What are you into? Well, uh, thank you. I am from Colombia, from Bogota. It is a beautiful city full of crowd noises. We don't have metro. We don't have the train. So for to have here all the, the weather, the stations and the crowded noises of Boston, it's beautiful. I'm studying the theology, Master in Divinity as a third semester. I started in, in spring and also fully engaged with this, giving my soul fully to, to what is going on here in U.S., Thank you. So the class you've chosen to focus on today is TH702, Christianity Engaging Modernity, with professors Radi Roldan Figueroa and Wesley Wildman, and that's a School of Theology class. Uh, so what's something you've learned in this class, a fun fact maybe, that stuck with you? I don't know if you have read about it or maybe to be surprised. Um, did you know that there, there are preachers, uh, they are writing his ser their sermons with chat GPT. I did not know that. I feel like I should be surprised, but it's everywhere now after like three weeks of existence. I feel that, I don't know, is it going to be, are they inspired by the Holy Ghost? Are they inspired by, by their hearts using these technologies or how does maybe God or the spirituality works when you're working with technology too, no? That's like God in the machine. <laughs> well, uh, with after that, I think we can probably just dive right into the questions. Uh, so tell me about what each professor brings to the table. I understand that one of your professors is a school of theology professor and one is a computing and data science professor. That's right. And the things that they have brought to the conversation, it's to show how complex modernity is and how diverse, dynamic, and how difficult it is to approach modernity just by staying, reading, and there are a lot of things that we're losing that we need. I, uh, if I would add myself at like one year more or just studying this class, because it is amazing the quantity of text, the, the problems, there are a lot of violence the, um, and also gets you to think, how am I, am I going to respond to this text? The problematics, social problematics of each time and how people were crazy enough to give their answers to those times. Yeah. So um, can you tell me a little bit about how data and statistics are used in this class? And that's Professor Wildman, correct? So I remember the first lecture and the way that he was asking to all the classes, to, all, to the students, well, who believes in this, who is atheist, who comes here to study but do not belong to any spirituality like or any institution itself, but just comes as, as a theologian, but do not, no, not involved in it. And many people were, were there their presence, the, that they are not involved with the institutions, Methodists, Presbyterians, or Universalists. Mm -mm. And it's also a big, a big task. Uh, it's a mission on how this school of theology is going to open their arms to them. So the, statis the statistics are that not all the students in theology are trying to get ordained or are looking for forward to be preachers that are also academics or also people that are trying to look for another spirituality. So churches, there are churches that are closing. There are people that not 
they are not fully convinced about how religion can help into their lives. And also people wounded by religion. I really am with them because we've been hurt. But also, I will not deny that religion can make peace, can be one of the last or, or the biggest tools to, to help, to build community, to, to reach for the divine and understand humanity with, with open eyes. So what you're saying is that modernity and technology, that's sort of a replacement for what religion used to be for people, sort of an answer to the unknown. Well, there are also ways that preachers and institutions are using technology to spread their, their messages, bad or, or wrong, politically very dangerous also, but also to build community. And pandemics has told us a lot about how technology was necessary and also a good tool because not everyone has car or have ways to engage with, uh, with the building itself. So thinking beyond the building or the church itself and how to create community beyond that. So it sounds like this class is very ingrained in like American history, like the Great Awakening and the religious revival period. A lot of sort of traveling preachers and community shifting. And also to, to see the background of the colonization of the Americas, of Latin America and the Spaniards. We saw, we read a few texts about it, Fray Bartolome de las Casas. Also, the way that England was engaging into Anglicanism, sending preachers to, and the origins of Methodism, the origins of this institution itself, that it's founded by Methodists, and how the Christianity was uh, very, getting, getting confused, getting richer, and also spreading with pietism, the, all the revivals with that kind of fire of Jonathan Edwards, of purity, looking. And also we think of liberation theology, like, oh yeah, this is very new, this is actual, this is from Latin America. No, there was a lot of preachers thinking in the, in the, in the times of Reformation, in the times of, of French Revolution. How do we engage with social problems with the gospel? Modern problems and uh, biblical solutions. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. Can be as beautiful and as problematic as, as it is. So I'm interested to know, because I know that this is a the second part of sort of a two-course series. The first being TF701, instruction, uh, sorry, Introduction to Christian Traditions. Uh, at what point, for the purposes of this class, does modernity start? Ooh, well, one of the first readings were, were related with the colonization of the South America or the Latin America because that was one of the biggest shift for European thinking because they were using their own judges, their, their own ideas, and they were trying to put those ideas in the context of the new things that they found. And they were already there. They were already living there with their own beliefs, but we put the frameworks of religion. We put the frameworks of this is satanic, this is not Christ, this is just uh, the other. So the modernity itself started with, uh, or many theorists and, and critics think that it started uh, with the discovery in quote markations because it is not a discovery of the Americas. And how do we engage with the other, with the mystery of the other? I want to get back to what you said about um, the conflict that modernity creates internally and kind of turn the spotlight on you and ask you uh, how you experience this class in the framework of your own life and your own beliefs. The way that myself, not only with modernity, with being in a new city, in a new country, as an international student, if anyone here tries to engage with my story about how new everything it is, um, the, the acceptance about how new everything is, and it is still, because I cannot put my frameworks from Latin American into a new context, and also how modernity can teach you 
that all the conflicts that you are and that you create in yourself are created. You can think about how you can also create different conflicts or how your conflicts are affecting your relation with the community that you're trying to create and the communities that can be grown from, from your activities, but in itself are not based in a religion. Oh yeah, we believe in this one particular thing. No, the diversity, the colors, the expression of life that we can build about, about every single aspect of these readings because I am sure I can swear it in a Bible that we will find a lot of different ideas that enrich this class. Can I ask you a little bit about why you chose to go to theology school and, and why you're coming to BU? This is, this is getting a spiritual too, even though it's modernity and modernity how how tries to use spirituality as a sale market. Um, in this case, my spirituality was that I was running away from God and I was running away from, from the way that Catholicism or the institution was not open enough. And I love the Pope that they have, but I do not feel fully Catholic because now if you use the word Catholicism, it's a universal or how do you in the roots of, or the etymology of Catholicism. It means variety and yeah. So in that sense, I found the Methodism a home, a family, a community, and the university itself is connected with churches. So I am connected with a church in Medford. And I said to myself, why not? With the help of a friend that she studied, she studied the Master in Divinity, she told me, Diego, you should. And I was like, let's do it. Let's take the jump because it is not easy for me to engage all the problems in modernity, accepting that I am also part of an institution because the Methodists are not saints. Um, it, they are a bit open. They, are, they have more inclusive, inclusiveness. They have more equality, diversity. Uh, and they have their own beauty, but... Wow, to be part of an institution and try to be the good one or trying to help knowing that these words are dangerous because in the name of God, I can hurt. In the name of God, I don't know if my actions will be good, even though if I think are good. And getting, getting to know that, that humility that I'm here to learn and to spread love. <laughs> Going back to what you said about how not everybody in your class is uh, wants to become ordained, would you recommend this class to, like, maybe an atheist? A hundred times, yes. And I think one of the first quotes to say very, uh, you will get more atheist, but also more more engaged on on the conflicts, the understandings that this is not an easy topic. This is just not to say, oh yeah, Catholics are bad. Oh yes, modernity is terrible. No, it's to to be open about how do we engage these, these ideas. Because it is not going to be easy maybe to read some text about nationalism, about maybe some fascism in Europe or racism or the origins of racism. It is not going to be easy. But it is going to be, I assure you, the start point to think more in the variety and the diverse in this, in this society. Well, Diego, thank you so much for sitting down with us. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. I feel like we got very cosmic. <laughs> You're a blessing. And this is part of, of a beautiful space uh, of the Boston University. I recommend it a hundred times. That's wonderful to hear. Um, and so everyone, thank you for tuning in to Today I Learned, a BU Today podcast. Do you have a favorite class you think we should know about? Tell us all about it by filling out the form linked in our description. Today I Learned is produced and engineered by Andrew Halleck and edited and hosted by Sophie Aaron. That's me. We'll see you next time.